From the blog Random Sweets, I'm Stacy Mergenthal, and this is Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens, a show for people who embrace the warm and cozy spirit of everyday living in the northern Midwest. And nobody does that better than my best friends and sisters, Heidi Thompson and Callie Reister. Today's show is all about appetizers. We're sharing a few of our go-to game day recipes, whether tailgating, a house party, or watching the big game on TV with our families. Plus, you'll hear what books my sisters are reading, from fiction to nonfiction, and a new Midwest cookbook. Heidi lives in Minnesota and spends most of her time with her granddaughter, Josie. Heidi and her husband, Will, have seen a lot of the Midwest on two wheels, riding their Harley Davidsons. She grows tons of vegetables in the summer and is a librarian at the Lake Benton Library. Wherever Heidi goes, her artistic talent and creativity make the world more beautiful. Callie works hard and maybe she plays harder. <laughs> she's a senior accountant at Harms Oil in South Dakota and she's working toward getting her CPA. She and her husband Josh spend summer weekends camping in their big RV at the lake and golfing as many holes as a Midwest summer allows. They never miss an SDSU Jackrabbits home football game, which means they're really good at tailgating. Now let's go see what they're up to. My sisters are with me today. <laughs> And they're really excited to be here. They're looking at each other, rolling their eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are an inspiration for me to do this podcast because we, I think about how many times we've driven down the road, heading out to the Black Hills or to Minneapolis, and we're just talking about all sorts of things. But also we usually try to have a one or two places on our list that's a new restaurant or a bakery. Heidi's usually in search of something caramely and sticky and <laughs> but we go back to some of our favorites too but we we talk about a new recipe that we've tried at home and so part of our conversations that we have had over the years is sort of an inspiration for me to start this podcast and so I'm just glad that you guys are willing today to sit down and talk about appetizers. And I learn a lot from you guys. That's really kind of the whole thing is you think, well, I have this, but who needs it? Well, I need it. I need that recipe <laughs> because I do learn a lot from from you guys. So Callie, you're, we're, we're going to talk about appetizers and sort of game day food snacks because we have the the big game coming up and people are getting ready to have little parties maybe. You're a football mom. You were a football mom. Nick is out of school quite a few years now, but football fan, Jackrabbit, yes. South Dakota State. You just took a trip somewhere for what? <laughs> uh, for the national championship uh, in Texas. And we brought home the championship trophy. Yeah, you're, you, you're more than a football fan. You guys follow SDSU athletics yes. in general. Basketball season ticket holders, football season ticket holders. Yeah. And so even if you're not – so you go to all the, the home games for football and basketball, men's and women's, and then when, you're, when they're away, you're still watching or listening to those games at home. And so it's fun to have some of these little game day foods. And yes. Heidi, had, Heidi has three boys, Garrett, Trav, and Cody, and they were all high school, middle school. Well, they started playing football as soon as they could play football. So you had many, many years of being a football mom, and they all – still like to watch football and they come to your house to watch the Super Bowl is kind of a tradition and you are like me where I'll be in the room when football's on <laughs> but I might be reading a book at the same time um, but your boys will come home and they'll expect to have some good food there because that's what you do absolutely sometimes I feel like being in the kitchen the whole day while they're watching football but other times yeah, I'm reading a book, reading a magazine, being on Pinterest, looking at food, keeping an eye on the score, but generally not watching every single play. Mm hmm. Yeah. And if it's not football, it's wrestling. They like to watch oh. the college wrestling on TV yet yeah, this time of year. So, sure. Which ones have wrestled again? 
Was it just Garrett or Garrett and Trav? Well, all three Pee Wee wrestled. And Cody had an injury in high school. And he was, so he was still part of the team. But And Garrett's the one that went to state wrestling. Okay. Yes. They enjoy that very much. And I was a hockey mom. Both Kalani and Sajin played hockey, middle school, high school. So we're all kind of at least sports moms. And I still love to watch hockey. So we'll travel like Callie will and for SDSU games, but we'll travel for hockey. Well, I'll start with the the first recipe that I wanted to share today that we wanted to share because it's kind of just a, a family tradition. We don't make it very often anymore, any of us, but we do try at family get-togethers when it's all of our families for one of us to bring the taco dip because our kids grew up on it just like we grew up on it it was our mom's recipe that we were used to and then she would bring it to everything so as we got older we took over kind of that responsibility of bringing it and it's really easy but like I said we we only maybe make it once a year for a family get-together And I've already shared this recipe on randomsweets.com, so people might be familiar with seeing it, but probably dates back to the 70s or 80s when this kind of came on the food scene with a big block of Velveeta cheese. (laughs) Now, mom's recipe, though, she only uses one pound of hamburger and half a pound of the Velveeta cheese, the box. So when I put it on my website, I did do it as a double batch so that you're using the whole box of Velveeta. I don't always like to have that second half of a box. Although I did just learn from Christiane that they sell boxes that have five chunk sections in there. So you're frying ground hamburger and then melting Velveeta cheese and cream cheese. And then you use chili without beans, a can, or in my recipe with doubling it, it's two cans of the chili with no beans. And then we usually just serve it with tortilla chips. So that's a nice crock pot recipe. It's easy to make a small batch. It's easy to triple or quadruple the batch and have, a, we've had huge crock pots. Oh, Callie, did you have one spill in your car once? I did. <laughs> I was responsible for bringing the uh, taco dip to Christmas at your house, Stacy, and tipped over on the floor of my car on the way here. <laughs> so. I, yeah. So it's a good good recipe to put in a large crock pot and serve people. And it is definitely good leftover. So if you have leftovers, do save it, put it in the fridge, and you can probably eat it for a couple days before you'd want to get rid of it. Divvy it up. Usually we send some home with the kids because the kids really are, our kids are the ones who kind of like it, and that's why we keep making it. If it weren't for them, we probably wouldn't keep making it. This year at Christmas, it was my Christmas this, uh, for my turn for Christmas and had my youngest son Travers have to make taco dip for the <laughs> first time and something we take for granted you know we know how to make that recipe without I, I wouldn't even dig out the recipe card mm-hmm. I had to send him to random sweets to look at the recipe he and his girlfriend contemplated how they were going to make it and I don't know how many trips to the store they had to make <laughs> and so it's something that the next generation is learning to make as well. Mm-hmm. So, I think one thing unique about that recipe and why our kids always enjoyed it was because it didn't have tomatoes mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. peppers or any of that that they didn't eat. It was cheese and meat. And now that they're older, they may be more apt to try those kinds of dips but that's really why my kids um katara would not eat (laughs) a cheese dip that had anything other than meat and cheese in it so well and garrett he wouldn't have eaten anything if it had what tomatoes oh no any any funky thing in there (laughs) i think even as he was younger he didn't realize that there's a can of hormel chili in there had he known that he wouldn't have even eaten it Mm. Now, he, as he's older, he knows how to make it himself, and mm. he knows what's in it. So that's the that's the taco dip that our family has made for many years. So, all right, what other recipes do we want to share? I have a different version of a dip that we make now more than the traditional taco dip that we made growing up, and I use just a jar of 
queso and I love Trader Joe's tomato-less corn salsa but you could use a jar of any salsa and we really like Italian sausage ground um, spicy Italian sausage and we just mix that together and that's the chip dip that we prefer to make for game day now and we also have a crock pot now that looks like a little cooler that has a lid that um, <laughs> is hinged and when the handle is up the lid is sealed and it's a great little tailgater crock pot that will not spill in the car <laughs> you send me a link to it and we can share yes. that in the show notes so that people can look at what it is because it is really cool you've brought soup all the way from your house over to Heidi's yep. in that and it doesn't spill yep. and we it, used it at Christmas um, to bring the green beans that we shared at Christmas it's definitely the one that's easiest to travel with it's Maybe not the first one that we use at home on Saturday or Sunday, but it's definitely the one that we take with us when we go. So, mm -hmm. Or tailgating. Yeah. Or... It was one of the first gifts that I <clears throat> bought my husband when we first started dating, and it's Aww. been one of the best gifts that... That's perfect for Josh, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you do tortilla chips, or do you have a favorite kind of cracker or chip that you use with it? I have a favorite tortilla chip. Oh, is it those ones that you told me about? And uh, yes. it's full circle brand um, yellow corn tortilla chips, and we go through bags and bags of those at our house. Um, they're just my favorite. They're simple ingredients. It's um, and they have a good amount of saltiness. Yes. They're not too plain. So when the shelves empty at High V and Brickings, it's because you guys bought them all. Yes. And I'm looking for them. Yes. <laughs> Ever since you told me about them, those are what I've been buying now. And see, this is what I'm talking about. Like just sharing those things. I think you sent a picture of them once and or something. And I'm like, oh, I need to try those because I love a good crispy, salty, yellow corn tortilla chip. And now I've been buying those ever since basically two bags at a time. Yeah. We never buy just one. We always mm -hmm. buy two bags and we at least we probably go through at least two bags of those chips a week at our house. Um, okay. We eat a lot of taco meat mm. and we do a lot of variations with taco meat after taco night as well. So those chips come in handy for lunch, for snacks, for meals. Mm -hmm. so. Heidi do you have a recipe that you want to share or are you just, you know? Well, like often when we're all together, we love to listen to each other talk about food and just, mm -hmm. yeah, everybody has a different variation, but it all makes sense anyway. My taco dip is very similar to Callie's, I think. I don't even have it written down, but that too is regular. You're making a cheese sauce from a block of regular cheese. I think part of the mm. reason that Will and I don't love our taco dip anymore is the Velveeta. Mm. We tend to try not to use Velveeta cheese, but that and Rotel and then sausage. But our sausage often is a breakfast sausage version just because that's what we usually have on hand. A breakfast sausage meaning the ground that you fry or like Correct. links that you chop up? Oh. No, the ground that you fry. Okay. But so, Callie, that's what you use too, right? But hers is Italian sausage. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it is still ground. But ground, but yeah. yeah. But we like the yeah. spicier, hot Italian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, Heidi, what, what was one of the recipes that you were going to share with us today, though? I'm excited because I didn't ask you guys. You didn't tell me what we're talking about, what you're bringing. So these might be new to me. Well, in our house, anything with vegetables tends to get pushed aside by the boys. Mm. And several years ago, Will and I started trying to eat healthier, low carb. Now, it doesn't mean it doesn't have calories or a lot of sodium. But one of the dips that I like to throw together, and often I only make a half a batch of this, is warm and cheesy bacon dip. Mm. And so it's sour cream, bacon, cream cheese cheddar cheese shredded and then you're putting green onions in there and that's been one of my favorites for a long time i really like that 
I like them most, maybe with a Ritz cracker or we like the Harvest Wheat crackers. Um, I get toasted. That toasted, toasted, yeah, or whatever that what, brand in is. the box. Toasted, maybe yeah. They in do the box. The onion, toasted onion, yeah. or okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we like that dip. So that dip gets baked in the oven, or most of the time I would put it in my little teeny tiny crock pot and just let it get bubbly. Hmm. And half a recipe goes quite a ways. And so you're using a cheddar cheese in there, but you could probably use any kind of cheese that melts that you like. Right. Or and half cheddar, a, half pepper jack. For a or... long time, I've loved sharp cheddar. Me too. And I grate my own mm -hmm. most all the time. Unless I'm going to be in a pinch, then I might buy a bag of shredded. But I shred mm -hmm. my own and it melts better. It doesn't have that starch on mm -hmm. the coating on there. So yeah, it melts better, if, especially mm -hmm. if you're going to be putting it on the top of something, you know, you want it to melt. Mm -hmm. So. Kelly. <laughs> well, the recipe that I want to share today is a recipe that my husband, Josh, just created last weekend. Ooh. And we had this on game day last Sunday. And he started with like a calico bean recipe, but we didn't have all the ingredients. So he created his own. Um, Josh does most of the cooking at our house. I do very little in the kitchen other than helping with assembly and cleanup. But this recipe, we had some T.W. Angus ground beef thawed in our fridge. And Josh had also picked up Dakota Butcher bacon from the locker in Watertown. In Watertown. He was there for work. So it just kind of came together that he put this um, cowboy beans together and it's ground beef, bacon. We had a can of pork and beans and then we always have black beans because we love black beans and an onion, some brown sugar, ketchup and a little yellow mustard and put it in the crock pot and we nibbled on it. <laughs> all day long and just could not stay out of it it was so good so kind of a different it would be a good traveling treat to take a tailgating at a game or at a gathering but it worked good for just being at home as well mm -hmm. I had a bag of cornbread crisps that I ate with it and that was really good but otherwise, just with a spoon. and So that's what I was wondering. Is it kind of something that you're using as a... It's not a bean dip because you have all these beans. It's more of a kind of eat with a spoon sort of thing. Yes. Okay. Yep. And then a little bit saucy because you're adding... There's a little liquid in those things you're talking about. Plus you're adding some mustard and... And a little bit of ketchup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it pretty thick. It, you know, definitely not a dip. That's a nice warm when you're talking about kind of football season, winter time, especially tailgating, something warm other than a dip. Right. And the temperatures this past week here in, <laughs> um, in South Dakota, it's been very cold. And so it seems like any of our game day go-tos are crockpot warm mm -hmm. food items. Right. Well, and you, you said you don't do much in the kitchen, but I mean, when you, maybe not as much in the winter, but I know in the summer when you have all your vegetables from your garden and things, you're doing a lot. You're chopping up vegetables and you, you freeze them too, because you have a freezer full of like green beans and stuff. So, um, yeah, but, but Josh, does Josh does a lot that. of that too. So, um, yeah, it, I, I think. Josh really loves to be in the kitchen. He mm -hmm. loves to use a smoker and the grill. And he he loves to feed his family. And it's his love language. And mm -hmm. I I love that he does that for us. So mm -hmm. Yeah, he makes I, good stuff. You know, he travels for work a little bit. And I send him pictures of scrambled eggs. Because <laughs> that's all I eat when he's gone. But I am capable of cooking for myself yeah 
and he has a smoker and a grill and the Blackstone and I yes. mean, another appetizer, Heidi. So when we were talking about appetizers, it made me think my family, any gathering that we have, whether it's a holiday or a football game on a Saturday or Sunday, but they want South Dakota sushi. Which, <laughs> does everybody know what it's called? South Dakota sushi. So this would be your ham roll-ups with the pickles in the middle. Recently, I was watching on TV, they took thicker cut ham, slight, or put cream cheese on it, rolled pickles inside, which would be the very simple, neat way to do it. But from way back when, I got thinner cut ham, sliced ham at the deli. And then I put cream cheese on each slice, and then I start kind of layering them so that they're a whole long row, and then put pickles all the way down the middle, and then roll them all up. And then I put that in the fridge and then slice them so that individual pickle discs. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense that way? So, and I've used different kinds of cream cheese. I have put Worcestershire sauce and onion salt inside the cream cheese, but... Lots of different variations of that. And there are times, too, when I get in a hurry and I've just put it all in a bowl and made one big dip out of it. Oh. And we enjoy that just as much. But it's always a staple at the Thompson household for any holiday. What kind of pickles when you're talking about that well, you roll them Well, it would be up? dill pickles mostly. But Diced? You know, or? Yeah. Some people use, like, the spears. Mm -hmm. I tend to like to buy just the regular Velasic, little bigger dill pickles so that you get a good dill in the center. Um, Trav's girlfriend, Mary, at Christmas time made her version and she took a little spicier dried beef and rolled that around pickles with the cream cheese. Mm. And that was very good. So the basis of the South Dakota sushi could be whatever you're most familiar with, but you do the same concept. So some sort of a meat. Right. Th like a sliced thin meat or sort of thick, but like a deli meat. Right. And then having some sort of a cream cheese or something on it. I think Will's mom too used, do they make canned dried meat, dried beef? Mm -hmm. I think she mm -hmm. started with that. Yeah, you use that canned dried beef to chop, dice that up when you're making like the cheese ball that has dried beef and oh, onion yeah. and bacon and it's rolled in nuts a lot of times. That's a canned dried beef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have used salami. Mm. You just have to make sure it's sliced thin enough so that it will be rollable, right? Oh, so yeah. it will bend, so it will curve. I suppose you could use pepperoni, the big, when you go to the oh, deli yeah. and you can order those big round slices of pepperoni. Yeah. You could probably do a pepperoni too and like a pepperoni or something instead of a pickle. Absolutely. I don't really, Jason likes those, so he would probably like that. But I love yeah. pickles, so yeah. <laughs> I would do dill pickles. And a similar recipe to that is the cream cheese wrapped olives. So you're taking oh, cream yeah. cheese. My recipe doesn't add anything else to it other than just kind of getting it all stirred up so it's soft enough to be molded around one of those really large queen green olives. Making it into a ball, patting it flat, and then it just kind of wraps right around the olive. Put it in the fridge for a little bit, wrap it in. Uh, well, you want to put some nuts around it. Now, walnuts, pecans, ground up. Just gives it a little crunch around the outside edges. But once it's been refrigerated and more solid, you cut them in half. And once you do that, you see the beautiful green olive with the red pimento inside. We really like those. And so those aren't baked. They are not baked. They're just cold. And the olive is robed in this cream, cream cheese, cheese mixture that you've yeah. added some things and then rolled it in nuts. Yep. Yeah put them in the fridge so they sort of get solid. And then when you're serving them, you're cutting them in half and Correct. serving them as little bites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that too was something that we started doing when we were trying to eat a little more low carb, trying to avoid the flour tortillas, buns, things like that, because they would be gluten free. What are those called? Do you call them? Cream some? cheese wrapped olives. Oh, that's fancy. Isn't it fancy? 
it's not like as fancy as South Dakota sushi. Right. We'll have to think of something. Olive bombs. I yeah. Don't know. Full carb olive bombs with nuts. I do have a couple Nutty of bombs. recipes. I didn't. I don't have them today, but um, a baked green olive hmm. appetizers. Uh, and I think that does sound really interesting. Personally, I've never really tried a baked green olive. But we eat green olives on pizza, and those are I baked. I love that. Yeah. I and there's not a be, lot of recipes that use green olives, so. It'd be worth a try. Mm-hmm. Did you say you have that recipe? or you I have saw seen? that recipe last night and mm. thought that is one we need to try. Okay, cool. That's a good one, too. I like that. I'm going to add that for not just game day, but for me personally to eat. You can small batch that mm-hmm. so easily. Yeah. Well, and I think the recipe actually does say that you could use those smaller olives, like, a, hmm. you know, the normal you would buy in a small jar. But we like the big olives and we like those in our beer. And so to have them around, you know, you could make half the jar mm. of olive for an appetizer and then you still have olives for your to beer. So I can drink too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't like beer. I, I like it okay, but... I do like I do like green olives in my beer. Yeah. If I'm drinking beer, but I typically do not. No, I don't. I always drink. thought that was a normal thing to do, but if you leave the Midwest, people think you're weird when you ask for olives, and that oh really? We've always called it a South Dakota daiquiri. All right, Callie, you have more to share? Another go-to game day recipe not really a recipe it's more just assembling a couple things (laughs) (laughs) just frozen meatballs and a jar of cocktail sauce and grape jelly and a little bit of garlic powder mixed together Mm. and in the crock pot again we usually josh usually bakes the meatballs a little bit first before putting them in the crock pot so Mm. they get kind of a little bit of a browned edges to them and I like that idea but um, cocktail sauce and grape jelly mixed together with just whatever seasonings to taste is one of our go-to's another variety of that is just frozen meatballs um, little smokies and mixing them together Hmm. Um, we stopped at somebody's tailgate spot this last fall and they had meatballs and smokies with just a a smoky barbecue sauce and it was so good i never thought to put those two things together right super easy just so good i like that idea i've never thought of it but we like both of them so why wouldn't you just put them in the same Mm -hmm. crock pot instead of having to decide do we do little smokies this time or meatballs well why not do both yeah yeah I prefer the beef smokies mm-hmm. and that particular barbecue sauce that we use was a craft smoky barbecue. Not my, you know, usually I like Old West mm-hmm. barbecue sauce, but you can choose any of your favorite. Or what's, what's that other barbecue sauce? Primal Kitchen? Primal Kitchen is what I use a lot now. And that has no sugar or really low sugar? Lower sugar, yeah. Okay. Of course, meatballs, we prefer Judy's meatballs, but that's more of a meal okay. item. I don't make that for tailgating, I guess. Mm-hmm. So. And we've talked about or mentioned Judy's meatballs twice now today, so we, we definitely need to have Judy's meatballs on here sometime. Well, and I was thinking the same thing about Judy's meatballs, but also the handball mm-hmm. version of Judy's meatballs. Not something that everybody probably has ever had it in. I mean, in the Midwest, in Iowa, you know, with a lot of pork. But sometime we can talk about the ham version of meatballs. I've never had that. I don't think I've had Judy's ham balls either. So we definitely need to talk about that and share it. Well, and especially with the prices of meat and stuff right now, ham happened to be cheaper Mm. than buying ground beef one day and so I bought a ham and I put it in my food processor and ground up the ham and froze it with pork and beef which makes the ham ball mix okay so sometime we'll have to do that yep and Judy for 
if you know our family, you know Judy Thompson is Heidi's husband, Will's mom, who died at the beginning of October, yes. just in 2022. And she was a huge part of their family and a part of our family. And she was a farm wife, farm mom. She had one child and one husband and a huge table in the kitchen, fed a lot of people and made great food. And so it would be really fun just to have an episode where we talk about Judy's food and Judy and maybe Garrett and the boys or something would join us too, because Garrett makes some of that or knows how because Garrett kind of knows his way around the kitchen. So absolutely, that would be fun. Yeah. Well, I have one recipe left because okay. the three sisters together couldn't do something like this without talking sweets either, right? Yes, because I if mean, I'm eating a dip, I would need a brownie. Well, that's just it. So <laughs> none of us have talked about like dessert. And in my house, I have to make something for dessert. One of my guilty pleasures is a box brownie mix on top of graham crackers baked in the oven and then you're putting marshmallows and toast them over the top so s'mores brownies okay i Guilty don't know pleasure. about this um very simple oh you don't know that one no oh goodness I'll, there isn't really a recipe needed it's just like making the brownies like you would anyway out of a box but you put graham crackers on the bottom of the pan first yes and, and then, then put the the batter that you've already mixed up yeah. from a brownie yeah okay you bake that? Correct. And when it's done, or almost done, you're sprinkling marshmallows on the top so that they get toasted brown in the oven and pull it out. Mm -hmm. And you have s'mores brownies. Oh my gosh. And who doesn't usually have like all those ingredients in your house at one time? But that wasn't really the one I was going to talk about, but that oh, is okay. one of my guilty pleasures. <laughs> yes. Um, okay. Next will, sweet one then. Yes. So <laughs> I started doing this more when I was traveling for work. In restaurants training and you can put in a pizza oven you could put in an air fryer you could put it wherever but take either Ritz crackers or my favorite pretzel flip sides mm -hmm. so they're the pretzel crackers and whether you have uh, Reese's peanut butter cups or Rolos mm -hmm. and pop them in there for even even in a microwave for a couple seconds it doesn't take very long but you want to get them soft because then you're going to turn around and put another cracker on top. So you're basically making a sandwich out of them. Okay. Especially with the pretzels. So it's the sweet and the salty together. Mm -hmm. Very good. I like the idea of doing a Reese's. You said Reese's peanut butter cup, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. I know you guys like the Rolos. Don't you do the pretzels? With, like regular pretzels with the Rolos. Callie does too. You're shaking your I head. Do. Yeah, you guys like the Rolos favorite, better. The Rolos. And then you do the M&M on top. The one that you see a lot of times at Christmas, but... But I tend to not just buy pretzels. I tend to buy the pretzel crackers, the flip sides. Well, first of all, they're solid. Right. I mean, you don't have the holes in them, so if you want to do something in between, it's not going to melt through or fall through. Right. This is a great idea for a snack that you can have just a couple, you know. Right. You, can, well, you can make two. Right. And you could save one till later, but I promise you probably won't. Probably not. <laughs> no. But it's not like making a pan of brownies where you're committed mm, to finishing sure. the pan of brownies. Um, having some crackers and some Rolos, you could make just right two at a time for a little treat. I made them before Christmas, but they didn't even make them to, until Christmas. So nobody <laughs> got to see them at Christmas time. <laughs> But you could idea. freeze them, too. So like Callie said, if you're trying to limit yourself, control portions a little bit, you can pull a couple out for a day, and then the rest are in the freezer, and you get to treat yourself to just a couple. Right. And again, you all three of us are trying to learn how to manage all of that, the the love for the comfort food and the sweets and the salty and the all of that, but how to limit portions or cut sugars or some carbs and but what are some of those really good foods that you can just kind of have one and you're not ruining yourself for the day and feel you need to get back on your treadmill? So, And sure, it's probably something that I could buy at the store in the form of a pretzel with peanut butter stuffed pretzels or something. But this way I'm using ingredients that I like. Mm -hmm. And again, 
making it in the amount that I need. Mm-hmm. So. And sometimes just when you make it at home, it's better. Just like Chex Mix. Sure, you can buy a bag of Chex Mix in the store, yeah. but I, I don't like the Chex Mix in the store, mostly because I don't think there's enough of the Worcestershire and garlic salt in it. So Yeah, Chex Mix, they don't make it like they mean it. <laughs> I mean, yes i make mine like i mean it she does yes, yes. <laughs> um was there more did you guys have more i don't have more i'm not like things. counting how many anybody no. did or anything so i was going to share the taco cheesecake because we like that Callie loves the taco cheesecake heidi loves the taco cheesecake and my guess it's probably got to be a little bit low carb because the crust, there's no crust. All you're doing is sprinkling a little bit of cornmeal in the bottom of the pan. Then it's the cream cheese and there's taco seasoning. So you do the cream cheese and then a taco sauce or a salsa. So you can do the sauce if you don't want the, all the chunks from the salsa. And then uh, taco seasoning and eggs. And then here again, we're doing some shredded pepper jack and so I do shred the the block because it's going to melt into that cheesecake so you don't have solid shreds in in the cheesecake and then you just you bake it and you can do it in a nine inch springform pan or any kind of springform or do it in a cupcake pan with the cupcake paper so you could just serve little individual here's your little appetizer in a cupcake paper and the crackers and then I usually, when I serve it, I'm serving it with diced black olives, pico, sour cream. Like, you guys love the diced black olives on there, and I don't like black olives, so everybody can kind of tailor it to how they like it. Plus, if you're, however you're making it, it doesn't really matter, but you can freeze them. So again, if you have just some little baby taco cheesecakes in the freezer, you can pull one out, and that can be a thing that you have. Um, but it's kind of fun to serve at a party or something because taco cheesecake's not a common thing. It, it's not like a bean dip where you might have two or three people that bringing bean dip. Taco cheesecake's pretty unusual, but it tastes good. It's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. I love it too. But I had an idea for you to create something along those same lines. Imagine taco cheesecake but using muflata mix. Oh, sure. You know, that has like green olives, green olives black, black olives, olives, capers. I don't know what all is in it, mm-hmm. but the same sort of thing. I think that would be delicious. Sure. Maybe somebody already has invented it or has a recipe, but I don't know. You are headed to Alabama. You might be able to find some good mouflata small um sauce or something down in that area is that more of a southern thing it is okay i mean you do find it up here a little bit once in a while but i mean at this point i i used to have a brand that i loved but we haven't been able to find it up here for a long time i can order it online but it's very expensive Mm -hmm. but otherwise uh, kowalski's off their olive bar Mm -hmm. has a pretty good one okay that would be good well you could really just take this taco cheesecake recipe and tailor it to be that you maybe wouldn't add the taco seasoning you might add some other seasonings like an onion powder garlic salt yeah and then add the mufalada is that how you say it? yeah i believe there again we don't know if we say things right up here right we kind of butcher some yeah the names of some things yes, but, we do. but you could tailor that because i also have a like a gouda and gruyere bacon cheesecake well i mean cheesecake pretty much is cream cheese and eggs and then whatever else you're adding to it so for sweet you're adding sugar and then vanilla and that can call it quits or add your other seasonings but so the same thing for a savory cheesecake you have to have your cream cheese and your eggs but whatever else you're adding to it you know adding the eggs and baking it makes it different from a cheese ball (laughs) obviously right but you definitely could do that And I've also done these in little, like the four ounce mason jars. And I really like to eat cheesecake out of there, especially a appetizer type one, because you can serve it with crackers or tortilla chips. The taco cheesecake is really good with those, um, the corn crisps, the Trader Joe's ones that we get. And just serve them with little knives or spreaders and then just spread them on those little cornbread crisps. So 
And my other recipe that I make um, probably all year long, it doesn't, it's not, it, I just say, oh, I'm craving buffalo chicken dip. <laughs> And I don't like blue cheese, so my recipe is a buffalo chicken dip that I either will uh, bake two, basically like a pound, so two unbreaded skinless chicken breasts, and that way it can just be shredded, or just get a rotisserie chicken from the store that's already done, shred up that chicken, and then you're using cream cheese and a buffalo wing sauce, which our favorite is uh, the Hooters buffalo wing sauce. And then you use ranch dressing, the prepared ranch dressing, Monterey Jack cheese, Colby Jack cheese, and that's it. And then you can just, you just melt all that together. And again, it can be in a crock pot. And now I, I eat it hot. Jason likes it cold. So he'll eat it when I make it, when it's hot, but he likes it better once it's solidified and gotten um, cold in the refrigerator. I think more because it's less messy to eat, but to me, it's too hard. You can't dip your... You can't dip your chips into it because it's a harder cream cheese. You need like a hard cracker, and we eat it with tortilla chips. So the nice thing about that Hooter sauce is it does come in a medium and it comes mm-hmm. in a hot, which I can't do the hot. Right. The medium is actually too hot sometimes. <laughs> I need the extra. We do the medium because that's what ranch. I can handle. If Jason was making it, he would do the hot. Right. He he would definitely prefer more spiciness, heat to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, those are some good recipes, you guys. And a couple of those are ones I've never made and now I want to make. Well, another thing, too, we love to read. And so did you guys have any books you wanted to share? So mostly I'm a nonfiction reader, which I feel like I'm kind of odd that way. But I am one of those lifelong learners, I think, that likes nonfiction. But uh, lately I started reading more fiction again. Two that I've read lately, The Sisters of Sugar Creek by Kathy Leggett. Okay. Um, I used to love to read the inspirationals and um, more the Amish stories, and that was kind of part of this one. So I enjoyed that. And then the other one is It's Murder, Don't You Know? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, isn't so, that author coming? Well, yes. they're doing a virtual for the Plum Creek Library System. Yeah, yeah. she's a Minnesota author, and she, the Plum Creek Library System will be doing Zoom author meet and greet sort of thing. Regardless, I wanted to be sure that I read one of her books, mm-hmm. and it's fun kind of to read an author that's very Midwest and uses the words "oof da," "don't you know." <laughs> And I sent a snap to one of you guys, or both of you, that said her sister was one can of soup short of a hot dish. And I thought that was pretty funny. I mean, it was just very relatable to me. So, And Callie, it's pretty exciting. She's got her Brookings Library card that she got when she was a kid and able to get it renewed and still use it. The same card. Our last sister's trip we spent some time talking about libraries and books and the on the car ride and I went home and dug for my public library card that is my original card from when (laughs) I was a kid or when they first got the barcodes on them and I went and renewed my card and checked out a book find your path by Carrie Underwood And it's just really interesting. She shares some of the workouts that she does at home, how she tries to stay fit when she's on the road. She shares recipes, tips, her favorites. It's just a really fun, easy book to read. And um, I actually renewed it and kept it a little extra long (laughs) and picked it up multiple times. Just kind of, I didn't read it front to back, but it was a, really inspirational book so what the sorry what was that one called again find your path okay Um, all right a lot of your listeners like cookbooks and so one of the most recent ones that i checked out was molly yay's from the food network home is where the eggs are Mm -hmm. and i enjoyed actually reading her stories in there very down to earth 
where did we just go that you brought that with? Did we go to the cities? We went to the cities and I had checked it out like the day before. I took it mm-hmm. with me and looked at it on and off throughout the weekend. And by the end of the weekend, I decided to return it to the library unread. I didn't finish it because I was buying it. Because you knew you were going to buy it. Yep. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up. And uh, Callie, I really do hope that you'll come back and share your healthy snacks. Heidi, you, you've done the same thing and you have those healthy things. So I don't know if we'll do one together to talk about that or you'll do a separate one but we could talk about our trader joe's hauls and the fact that we don't have a trader joe's where we live (laughs) we have to drive three and a half hours to even get to a trader joe's and uh, we have our lists and our favorite things and again by sharing our lists with each other sometimes because we'll shop for each other if one of us is in minneapolis and the other isn't then we learn new products that we like because the other one had it on their list and we didn't know about it so it's really just all about sharing ideas and recipes and and I'd really like to get Garrett on here too. I haven't asked him yet, but I hope that he will because he, like I said, he'll he knows how to make a cookie or yeah. something in yeah. the kitchen. So all right, well thanks you guys. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. You're welcome. Can't wait for you to come back. <laughs> Oofta! We covered a lot of snacks in this episode. You'll find the recipes on randomsweets.com. If you're wondering about the tomatoless corn salsa Callie talked about, or her slow cooker that travels well, you'll find them linked in the show notes, along with links to Full Circle Tortilla Chips, TW Angus Beef, Dakota Butcher, and the books we shared. I'm working on something fun for April, so do me a favor before next week and dig out your recipe card for funeral potatoes, or you maybe call them cheesy hash browns or hash brown casserole. Just do me a favor and get your recipe out, okay? And tune in next week because my son Sajin and I are talking about some of his favorite meals that I make and which ones of those he and his girlfriend Sydney are now making for themselves. Plus he shares one of his favorite podcasts and it's not mine. (laughs) I hope you subscribe or follow Funeral Potatoes and Wool Mittens and that you are set up for alerts so that you are the first to know when a new episode is available. Sweet wishes!